In 1837, Howard Weiss and J.R. Hill were dynamiting portions of the Great Pyramid as a means of speedily exploring various aspects of its construction and, of course, hunting for treasure. On the 26th of May, he was blasting on the upper south side of the pyramid near the mouth of the southern air shaft. When searching through the resulting rubble, Hill pulled a metal plate from a joint in the exposed masonry, Witnessed affidavits attesting to the legitimacy of this find were recorded, and the plate was shipped to the British Museum. Examination of the plate by metallurgists in London determined that the plate was of wrought iron and terrestrial rather than meteoric origin due to the low nickel content. Subsequent re-examinations in 1989 discovered traces of gold on one side of the plate. The plate was formed from a number of thin laminate layers hammer-welded together. Its long dimension is almost exactly the width of the southern shaft, so it could well have been a door or cover on the mouth of the shaft. We know that the Great Pyramid was clad with true limestone in antiquity, but we do not know with certainty if the air shafts penetrated through this cladding or stopped short of it, nor whether there was any provision for sealing the mouths of the shafts, but it seems reasonable to speculate that they could indeed have been closed off, perhaps with iron plates such as the one discovered in 1837. There has been a long-lasting debate as to whether this find was native to the pyramid's construction or whether it was more likely to be the result of a later intrusion, fueled primarily by the academic assertions that iron mining and smelting was not a skill that the ancient Egyptians possessed until after 1300 BCE. However, when we look at the archaeological record, we see that in 1882 Gaston Maspero found iron in the pyramid of the 5th dynasty king at Abu Sir, and Flinders Petrie found an iron wedge at Abidos, circa 1883. Evidence of iron production dating to 2800 BC has been found in Mesopotamia, and though iron manufacture may have spread from Western Asia south through Africa, iron working in Sub-Saharan Africa may have developed independently. Iron artifacts of meteoric origin are also present in the archaeological record of ancient Egypt, beginning with nine pre-dynastic tubular beads found at Giza and dated to circa 3500 BCE. Analysis shows that the metal was 7.5% nickel and thus of meteoric origin. A ceremonial dagger made for King Tut, also of high nickel content meteoric iron, is on display in the Cairo Museum. It is probable that the ancient Egyptians were familiar with iron smelting and working, as well as capable of fashioning objects from meteoric iron as early as 3500 BCE. Since most iron artifacts from this period would be unlikely to survive into the modern era unless accidentally or purposely preserved, the development of forensic techniques that could detect the oxidized remnants of such items within the context of archaeological excavations might broaden our understanding of ancient metallurgy, tool creation, and use.